Hello guys, today I'm going to be replacing the rear suspension on my 2001 Volkswagen Golf. So I chose um, Coney Active shocks and H&R uh, Sport Springs. So I have the vehicle jacked up already. As you can see where I put the jack at. And then the jack stands. Make sure it's safely supported before you start working on it. Uh, I have the front wheels chalked and make sure that uh, it's in gear or if you have an automatic that it's in park. You can see where I put the jack stands at and the proper points. And I left the jack under there for uh, support. So now we can go ahead and get started. As you can see, I have a broken spring uh, right here, which is not good. So we're going to go ahead and remove everything, and uh, I'll try to make this step-by-step uh, -step procedure to make it as easy as possible. Okay, the first step will be to remove these rear wheels. I did break the lug nuts before I jacked it up. It's easier that way when it's on the ground. It gives us uh, better access to this rear shock. Okay, now that I have the rear wheels uh, removed on both sides, you can see we have much easier access here. Uh, this rear spring actually is loose now. It, it'll fall right out if I grab onto it. Like so, because it's clearly broken at the bottom here. This is my third one of these uh, suplex springs that broke on me. So I highly just suggest do not get these things because they don't last very long. So now we have um, uh, easy access here to this lower shock bolt. And uh, the top part here, those two uh, bolts are easily accessible now. Now you can see this uh, bump stop is shot, it's uh, deteriorated. So I have replacements here for uh, this as well. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and remove this um, lower shock bolt here. First I like to spray these up. Let that soak. Same with the other side. Uh, this is a 16 millimeter nut. And the head on this bolt is also 16 millimeter. Okay, you'll need a deep well socket since this uh, bolt sticks out so far. I have a pretty long breaker bar on here um, for additional leverage, but it actually wasn't that tight at all. Okay, I would get a hammer and just tap that through the other side. Let's grab onto it. I have to wiggle it a little bit. It doesn't matter that you're going to replace these bolts anyway. Okay, you can see that's loose. Now we can go ahead and uh, take the top two bolts out. All right, moving along to this um, upper mount removal here. These are two 16 millimeter bolts. 
I'm using a uh, 10 inch extension. It gets me far away so that I can operate the ratchet and have enough room to do so. Now these aren't very tight. This one in the back here, you have to watch this inner fender. It will move out of the way though, so you can get your socket on there. Okay. You just have to maneuver this around to get it out of here. You have to compress the shock like so and then you can pull it out of position. That wasn't too bad. As you can see, this uh, bump stop is shot. Uh, here's the top mount. I do have uh, new parts here that I will show you in a minute. All right, the next step is to pop this plastic cap off the top. Just get a screwdriver underneath here, and uh, you can see it separates, and just pull it off with your hands. Okay, the first item I'm gonna install is this lower spring perch. You can see the part number right there. I'll have it written in the description as well. So this goes right here. You can see that perch is all rusted and um, I just want to replace it. As you can see I got it loose. I just took a screwdriver and lightly tapped on it with a hammer and it popped right off. So I can go ahead and throw this away and I like to clean this area up with some uh, WD-40 and then we can go ahead and install the new one. Simple as that. Okay, we're ready to install this rear spring. First off, the top uh, spring pad or buffer. This needs to be installed on the top of the spring. The part number is actually located on there. I know it's hard to see, but it's written on there. I'll have that in the description as well. You can see on this, the top of the spring, which is right here, this part of the spring has to rest right in here on this rubber top piece. So just insert this like so, just push it down in here. And that's ready for installation. Now make sure that you know what the top and bottom is. This spring is not the factory spring, as you can tell. But this is the top for this style spring, and this is the bottom. So it's very easy to install. We got to do that right now. Okay, we'll take our spring. <clears throat> and first, put the bottom in the location. Then you can push down like so to get the top pad in the correct location. So if you actually push down the spring like this and bring it towards the front of the vehicle, there we go. It's right where it needs to be. That's it, it's as simple as that. Now we can put the shock on. All right, now we are ready to assemble this uh, rear shock. So Kony gives you this little protective end cap in the kit, it slides right over the shaft like that. And now we can assemble our bump stop and dust boot. There's the bump stop part number. And this uh, dust boot has a part number as well. 
So you just take this uh, bump stop and you'll have to apply a little bit of pressure like so and it connects as one piece like that and this just slides on the shaft like so. Now we can take our top mount and slide it over top of the end of the shaft there. And this is a self-locking nut which gets torqued to 18 foot-pounds. Now if you look inside this shaft here you can see there's a 5 millimeter um, hex head. So you'll need a 5 millimeter hex to hold the shaft still while you tighten this nut. Okay, this is how I'm doing this part. So I have my 5 millimeter hex key holding that shaft still, and then a 17 millimeter wrench, and slowly um, tightening this top nut. Alright, so this is how I'm going to torque this top nut. So I have my 5 millimeter Allen key holding that shaft still, a 17 millimeter deep well socket, and I have <laughs> vice grips to actually turn this socket. Now this isn't the right way, but it's all I have. I don't have a uh, socket with external uh, hex head, so I can get a wrench on it. But what you could do, if you have a junk socket, you could actually grind two flat spots in the socket and then use a wrench that way. But this is what I um, chose to do and uh, it actually works. So we're not torquing that high, so it's only 18 foot-pounds, so this, this will work. But it's just not the proper way. But it's all I had laying around, so until I can get some more tools, this is what I gotta do. <laughs> okay, that's, that's pretty good. The key is to have this on here really, really tight so it doesn't slip on your socket. Uh, one more thing, this uh, bump stop, you need to um, in, insert it inside this top mount here, so just twist and uh, turn until it fully seats up inside there. There we go. Okay, one last thing. Don't forget to take your dust cap and just snap it back on top here. That protects everything. Take your shock assembly and insert the top in the, in the correct position first and then rotate the bottom like so for the bottom uh, mounting area and then get your new hardware ready because we'll go ahead and put these two top bolts in. So here's my new mounting hardware. Always use new mounting hardware. Here's your two bolts for the top mount and bolt and nut for the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and uh, Screw these up into place. Okay, take your new hardware. Go ahead and install these bolts. These get torqued to 22 foot-pounds, but we won't do that until we have um, everything else assembled here. So right now we're just going to put these in by hand, and then we'll lower the car and torque them while we have the way of the vehicle and everything. Okay, we're ready to install this lower shock bolt. So what I do is use my jack and lift this up and align your hole up with the bottom mount and take your bolt, slide it through, and then thread your nut on. This gets torqued to uh, 30 foot-pounds plus a quarter turn. So as soon as you hear your torque wrench click, do an additional quarter turn. Okay, everything's snug on this side. So now we can go over and do the same thing with the other side. Alright guys, we're going to load the suspension to torque these uh, bolts since there's not enough room once you get the tire on here. There's just not enough clearance to get your uh, socket up in there. So go ahead and uh, 
pump this side up. Okay, now we'll leave it there and uh, go ahead and start uh, torquing these bolts. All right, set your torque wrench to 22 foot-pounds for the top mount. There we go, one's done. Other one's done. Okay, same thing for the other side. All right, time to torque this lower bolt. This gets torqued to 30 foot-pounds. Just make sure you have another wrench on the opposite side to hold the head of that bolt. There we go. Now you have to go a quarter turn past that click. So once you hit your 30 foot pounds, continue an additional quarter turn. All right, that takes care of that. Same thing for the other side. All right, everything is torqued. I have the wheels back on. Everything looks pretty good. So that completes the rear suspension install. This is the kind of wheel gap you're looking at. There's the rear and that's the front. I did the front as well. I already have a video on the front strut replacement. You can look for that if you're interested. I hope this helped you guys. Please subscribe and take care. Thanks for watching.